Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. For today's video, as you guys can see by the title down there, today we are talking about the Sodic Killer. This is just a super interesting case that it I've actually known about it a couple years and it's just very mind-blowing how nobody knows who this killer is. And after 50 years, it's still an unsolved mystery. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe and the little button down there. And if you want to learn more about the Zodiac Killer, then just keep on watching. The Zodiac Killer is an unidentified American serial killer that murdered seven confirmed victims that we know of, but up to 37. These murders happened between 1966 and 1969 in northern and southern california his method of murdering people was stabbing and shooting he was described as a five foot eight inches to five foot ten inches medium or slightly stocky built he had curly brown or slightly reddish hair he wore rimmed eyeglasses he wore a 10 and a half foot size shoe based on a print that they found at one of the crime scenes. So who was the Zodiac Killer? As of right now, no one has been apprehended as the Zodiac Killer and he did stop killing in 1969 or that's what we know that he stopped killing. We are not sure. There have been two movies based on the Zodiac Killer. The first one was called Dirty Harry and the second one was called Zodiac. I actually did watch the movie and it's pretty spot on and it is said that it is um, one of the movies that resembles more to the story of the Zodiac Killer so I definitely recommend if you guys haven't watched that movie. So the first murder happened on December 20th, 1968 when 16 year old David Faraday was with his friend 16 year old Betty Lou and they were both shot with a .22 caliber pistol at a remote area on Late Herman Rome, Vallejo, California. The second murder happened on the night of the 4th of July in 1969. Darlene Farina and her boyfriend Michael Magoo were sitting in their car in a park in Blue Rocks Springs Park in Vallejo, California, when they were approached by a man with a flashlight that actually blinded them so they couldn't see who it was. They were both shot, killing Darlene and seriously injuring Michael. Within an hour of the incident, a man called the Vallejo Police Department, letting them know of the exact location of the car, as well as taking responsibility for that murder and the murder from 1968. So on August 1st, 1969, the San Francisco Examiner, the San Francisco Chronicle, and the Vallejo Times Herald each received an identical handwritten letter in an envelope with no return address. The letter said, and I quote, Dear Editor, I am the killer of the two teenagers last Christmas at Lake Herman. The letters contain details for the murder that obviously only the killer would know. The killer went on to threaten further attacks if these letters were not published on the first page of the newspapers. Each letter contained one third of a cryptograph made up of 480 symbols. The killer said in the letter that if they would be able to decipher the uh, cryptograph that they would know his identity. In the letter, the killer said, I like killing people because it's so much fun. Each letter contained a symbol and this symbol this symbol consisted of a circle and a cross through it and this would end up becoming the zodiac killer symbol the letters were published by the newspaper and they actually asked the help of the community to help decipher these symbols that would reveal the killer's identity on august 4th the examiner received a three-page letter it was a response to the police asking to prove that the writer was actually committing these murders. And in this letter, it was the first time that the killer referred himself as the Zodiac. August 8th, David and Betty Harnan were able to decipher the cryptograph. And it did have a couple of misspelled words. And it read, I like killing people because it is so much fun. It is more fun than killing wall game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all. 
To kill something gives me the most thrilling experience. It is even better than getting your rocks off with a girl. The best part of it is that when I die, I will be reborn in paradise. And then I have had killed. And they have killed will become my slaves. I will not give you my name because you will try to slow or stop my collecting of slaves for my afterlife. And then it ended with just a bunch of random letters. On the evening of September 27th, 1969, the Zodiac Killer struck again. This time it was a young couple by the names of Cecilia Shepard and Brian Hart Hartnell. Uh, they were relaxing in a isolated part of the shore of Lake Veriza in Napa County. Brian did survive and he did describe the person that attacked them as they were wearing a hood and a shirt bearing the same zodiac symbol. He did tie them up and continue to brutally stab both of them. Unfortunately, when the paramedics got there, they were both alive, but Cecilia did pass away in the ER that night. The person that did attack them did leave the zodiac symbol in the car door and then proceeded to call the Napa Police Department to reveal that there was a double murder and gave the exact location to where Brian's car was. At this point, the police were able to trace this call and it was traced back to a car wash in Napa County, but that was the only lead that they unfortunately got. Two weeks later, on October 11th, 1969, the last killing ascribed to the soda killer happened. The killer took a ride in a taxi driven by 29-year-old Paul Stein. The Zodiac Killer did kill Stein by shooting him. And he also took a piece of uh, clothing, a piece, a piece of the shirt that Paul was wearing. As this murder didn't seem to fit the um, Zodiac Killer's M.O., then the police actually thought that it was a ro robbery. But days later, on November 8th, the San Francisco Chronicle did receive a letter claiming Paul Stein's murder. The letter came with a greeting card and another cryptograph consisting of 340 symbols. Written in the same way, the letter contained details um, about Paul Stein's murder that obviously only the killer would know. The letter also came with the piece of clothing that the killer had taken from Paul Stein's shirt. There were four other murders that were not confirmed that it was the Zodiac Killer, but that police did suspect that it was. The first one was Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards on June 4th, 1963. The second one was Sherry Jo Bates on October 30th, 1966. And Donna Lass on September 6th, 1970. On November 9th, the San Francisco Chronicle received a seven-page letter. The soda killer was letting them know that he was actually stopped by a nearby crime scene and that the police just let him go. And in this same letter, he did include a bomb recipe as well as a diagram of that same explosive. On December 20th, Melvin Bell Belly received a letter where the killer said that he feared that he was going to kill again and asked Belly to stop him. The letter did end with, please help me, I cannot remain in control much longer. I mean, at this point, if he knew that he couldn't stay in control, then why didn't he just like go to the police and, you know, say that he was the Zodiac Killer. On April 20th, 1970, the Chronicles received a 13 symbol cipher and a diagram of a bomb designed to kill children on a school bus. In that letter, uh, the Zodiac did deny that he had nothing to do with a recent police attack. On April 28th, the San Francisco Chronicle received another greeting card. Inside the card, the Zodiac demanded the newspaper for it to publish the bomb threats and insisted that the San Francisco people wore a button with the Zodiac symbol. Now, on July 24th, the same newspaper, the San Francisco Chronicle, received another letter where the Zodiac was complaining that the people were not wearing his buttons as well as saying that he was responsible for the abduction of a pregnant mother by the name of Kathleen Johns on March 22nd, 1970. A couple days after, the Chronicle rece received another five-page letter where the Zodiac described torturing his victims 
and quoted from the Gilbert and Sullivan musical De Mikado. In the letter, he also explained Mount Diablo code, concerned geometric angles known as radians. On October 27, Paul Avery, he was a reporter at the San Francisco uh, Examiner. He was a reporter at the San Francisco Chronicle, received another Halloween greeting card. He did write for T-E-E-N, which was interpreted as a possible reference to an unidentified 14th victim. On March 13, 1971, the LA Times received a letter where the Zodiac suggested that he was responsible for the unsolved murder of Sherry Lou Bates in 1966 in Riverside City. On November 22nd of 1971, Paul Avery received another postcard where the writer wrote Sot Victim 12 and it was like a postcard and this was interpreted to the missing case of Donna Lass in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. The search for new leads leads investigators to go across the country to Albany, New York. The Albany Times Union received a letter on August 1st, 1973 with the known Zodiac symbol. Again, no return address. Now this letter read, and I quote, you are wrong. I'm not dead or in the hospital. I am alive and well and I'm going to start killing again. Below is the name and location of my next victim. But you had better hurry because I'm going to kill her August 10th at 5 p.m. when the shift change. Albany is a nice town. Below the message, there were three rows of the symbols. And according to the FBI, the encoded message read albany medical center this is only the beginning and writing experts could not determine if the new letter was prepared by the writer of the zodiac letters due to a lack of significant characteristics in the albany message january 29 1974 the san francisco chronicle received another letter and in this letter the writer alluded to a possible suicide in another quote from the Gilver and Sullivan uh, musical, The Mikado. The notation also said, me, 37, SFPD, zero, which was interpreted as a box score, meaning that he had killed 37 people and that the San Francisco Police Department had zero points for finding him. And that was the last letter received. As far as suspects go, in my research, I did find six different names of suspects that have been throughout the years. The first one is Louis Myers. He supposedly confessed on his deathbed that he was the Zodiac Killer. He did attend the same school as the first victims and worked at the same place as the second victim. He had served in the army and, and did have access to military gear, meaning the boots, uh, because of his dad that was also in the army. Another clue was that he was stationed in Germany when the soda killings suddenly stopped. The only problem with Louis being the soda killer was that he did not fit the physical description of the Zodiac. Next suspect was Rick Marshall. He served in the Navy as a sailor and had training in code. He's described as somebody that had a really bad temper, especially with women. The only problem with him was that there was not enough evidence for him to be the Zodiac Killer. The next suspect was Lawrence Kane, and he was actually identified by one of the victims as the Zodiac Killer. And he was also unaccounted for during the Zodiac crimes, including the 1966 Riverside killing, meaning that he didn't have an alibi, so nobody knows what he was doing the nights of the murders. He also worked at the same building as the Lake Tahoe victim. He also studied code at the same time that he was serving in the Navy. And he was actually seeing, asking young women about their zodiac signs nearby a crime scene. I did see a documentary on the zodiac killer and actually Lawrence Kane was one of the main guys that they talk about in that documentary and I'm gonna leave it down in the uh, description box in case you guys want to watch that. It was really interesting. The only thing is that it, did, it does leave you like with a cliffhanger at the end. Um, there's only five episodes, about 45 minutes each and at the end they just 
it just ends and I mean we still don't know who the killer is the next subject was Ross Sullivan and to be honest I uh, I do think that he's the closest to looking like the Zodiac Killer as well as the um, as well as the evidence that they have on him first of all like look at this picture and the sketch like he looks identical to the sketch that the survivors have given the police so first off he does fit the description he wore military boots extremely similar to the print found in one of the crime scenes he also studied cryptography and wrote a detailed paper on creating complex codes Ross did grow up near the area where the Zodiac actually threatened to kill more people in Albany, New York. He then moved to Riverside, California prior to the Sherry Jo Bates murder. He actually also worked at the last place where Sherry worked, which was the library. Police also found an article from 1966. Well, that's a lot of blush. Police also found an article from 1966 where Ross is part of the high school theater club. They were doing a movie based on a serial killer as well. and guess what? Ross played that killer. And then the coincidence was that the murder or the story behind in that movie was the same as the Sherry Jo Bates murder. That was all they had on him but to me, he definitely was a Zodiac Killer. That's what I think, just because based on the evidence and the way he looks exactly like the person that's on that sketch. I just, I couldn't get past that because it was just, the similarities were there. The next suspect, his name was Jack Terrence, and he was an, a former enlistee for the Air Force and the Navy. His stepson actually reported him to the police as a suspect for the Zodiac Killer as he did possess um, evidence that could incriminate him. These pieces of evidence included handwriting samples, a hood similar to the one reported by the surviving victim, as well as a knife with blood stains. He also gave the police some undeveloped films with some gruesome images, as well as a taped phone conversation where Jack actually hints that he is the Zodiac killer. To rule him out as a suspect, the FBI did run some DNA based on that saliva sample that they found on a stamp in one of the letters. And unfortunately, those results came inconclusive. So there's that. The last suspect was Arthur Lee Allen. He was a convicted child molester and he was actually the prime suspect for many years. He was dishonorably discharged from the Navy. They actually found blood stained knives and he claimed that it was because he had found a chicken and he had killed it for dinner. He was in jail due to the child molestation charges and this happened to coincide where the Zodiac killer had stopped killing. Survivor Michael Magoo, he actually picked Alan right off a set of pictures where a detective actually asked him, do you recognize anybody um, in these pictures as the Zodiac Killer? And Michael actually picked Arthur from the lineup. Cops raided Allen's home in 1991 and they did find a typewriter, which it actually was the same kind of typewriter where one of the Zodiac Killer's letters came from, as well as a wristwatch that Allen would wear that had the actual Zodiac sign. The problem with Alan, unfortunately, was that the fingerprints and the handwriting samples did not match with him, as well as DNA testing was done, and it actually came back as negative. After watching the History Channel documentary, um, like I said, it did leave you a little bit with a cliffhanger, and they just mentioned Ross, as well as Lawrence Kane, as the like, primary suspects that they had. Um, it was actually really, really interesting. It was just for me that leaving me with that cliffhanger obviously we don't know who the killer is um maybe there can be like more than one killer because ross looked very similar to the sketch as well as lawrence they both looked like the, those sketches so 
I don't know, it's just mind-blowing to me how that, like, the soda killer was so meticulous to leave no evidence behind except for that small DNA sample with the saliva. History Channel documentary, they show you how they pull up one of the pants from one of the crime scenes and they are able to pull up a DNA sample and they don't tell you what happened with that DNA sample. Um, they just tell you that, that they find that sample. Yeah, that is it for today's case. It, it was very interesting to read and to learn. Um, I'm going to link down below the History Channel documentary if you guys want to watch that. But that is it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed and learned something. If there are any cases that you would like me to cover, please don't forget to leave them down in the comment section as well as checking the description box for all the products that I use in today's video. And until then, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!